you know my voice. Nobody can save me but Christ. He saved me in a Marine Corps barracks. If we confess our sins, the Lord is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Across the world coming live to you from my war room here in Dallas, Texas. Friends coming live to you from my war room here in Detroit, Michigan. From our war room here in San Antonio, Texas. Uh, here in Allen, Texas. And even though the location has changed, our Father's word never does. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked way. The Lord said, then will I hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. Listen to me. The word of God has it right. Hey, family and friends all across the world coming live to you from my war room here in Dallas, Texas, where we just honor the spirit of the Lord on today for sharing life in him and sharing his word with you. Listen, we just honor our heavenly father in the war room on today. The war room, as our custom has been open in great prayer. We've been in worship for several hours now and in prayer and in discussing the word of the Lord uh, with my team. And uh, the first lady was is in the war room with us uh, on today. And we just have uh, really just had a magnanimous time in the Lord. It's uh, we, we, we had to do that because um, we were ministering to several individuals. We normally come on at 1030. It's 105 uh, p.m. right now, Central Standard Time here in the war room in Dallas, Texas. It's uh, September 25th, 2022, and we just magnify the Spirit of the Lord. Um, we are not a conventional ministry. We don't have conventional church. We are led by the Spirit of the Lord, and so we normally come on. We like to come on at 1030. We had the threat of inclement weather here. It's supposed to rain today, so we decided not to uh, go into the into the um, park, into Hofer Park like we normally do. And so... As we got ready to minister, how many know that the Holy Spirit is not on our time clock? We're on His, all right, so to speak. And so um, there were individuals, there were things that needed to be tended to uh, with the Word of the Lord and ministering, some ministering that needed to go on. And so we praise the Lord for all of these things. We're going to open in prayer. We're going to jump right into the Word of the Lord on this morning. Uh, if you want to get a head start, grab 2 Timothy, the second chapter. 2 Timothy, the second chapter will be our scripture, our worship scripture. Um, on this morning, we don't always have one, but we have one this morning from the Lord that's going to lead us in to the mind of, uh, of the Lord on today and what he wants to speak to us. I'm just an oracle of his that he has gifted and profoundly impacted uh, since 18 years old and placed his spirit in and upon me and has uh, invested in me greatly his gifts. And the word of the Lord says to whom much is given, much is required. And he, he, and he speaks to his servants. He says, when I strengthen you, you turn and you strengthen your brother. And so the, so the word of the Lord coming forth on this morning is to strengthen the body of Christ. It is to challenge us. It is to caution us in certain rights to teach us in other rights it is to warn those that are outside of us to come in to the general assembly and church of the firstborn fasten your spiritual seat belts the lord is going to bless us mightily on the broadcast here on today and we just praise the lord for your patience i know many of you tune in with us at 10 30 and uh, we just bless the lord for your patience uh, we are growing here and uh, the lord is growing us and he is bringing um, others to assist us in various things and so we're the Lord's doing great things and, and and it is marvelous in our eyes and we just have to allow him to develop it and not try to force it ourselves and so I believe in that this is not my first rodeo this is actually the third ch church I'm pastoring and the third one that I have founded and so I have an apostolic heavy apostolic uh, armor upon me and anointing upon me and in me and so and, and 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 the Lord has sent me as a gift to the body of Christ I'm serving in the prophetic office currently because of of the warring nature of the work that we have to do to break to bind and to uh to cast out uh, uh demonic strongholds here there are great principalities here in the dallas fort worth area the greatest ones i've ever seen anywhere are here and is because they have they have located themselves here to try to stop the revival that will come forth out of dallas texas and go to the world over so they have amassed their forces here the lord sends his most anointed to the hottest sides of the battle he prepared me years ago to understand that uh through the men of god that he sent to lead me at that time and so he has sent me to dallas texas almost three years ago i've not ceased to warn the residents of dallas texas for 
three years now and the church and all of those various aspects as the Lord has caused me to minister here but make no mistake about it we are uh, there is great spiritual warfare here those of you who had an opportunity to come and minister here you have seen it but you have not seen the inner workings the Lord has allowed me to go into the streets here go into the uh uh, into the um, systems and into uh, various places and um, he has allowed me to go and to deal with these things and to witness these things and the wickedness that's in the pulpits many of the pulpits here and he has allowed me to see in the streets and into the corners and the dark places of the corporate world and various places he will send his servants and we come in and we survey and there's great work that needs to be done here one man is not going to get this done it's going to take an army standing up to break the powers here and to break what the Lord and so the Lord has sent me to break up the fallow ground that's the anointing I have and it's the apostolic anointing the apostles would go into cities into towns and they would turn them upside down they would minister the word of the lord their word was heavy it was it flowed not just like a mighty river but a volatile river and the lord has sent us in to do this type of work i say this because it is going to set the ground for what the holy spirit is going to speak to us and say to us on this morning so fa again fasten your spiritual seat belts i'm in the firepower of the holy ghost i'm going to leave the preacher on the bench this morning so that i can i can teach mostly because this message is primarily for the body of christ all the holy spirit can can take it and all who can glean who will hear the word of the lord not just on uh today but uh in the future but the but the reality is this message is for the body of christ primarily the lord is preparing the harvest laborers we shared in week one when we begin to break the bread of life in second peter you can grab second peter that's where we'll be going next and that's the main text that will be in uh our, our substratum text for the day it's the main text we'll be in today grab second peter and um and i will let you know when we get there what chapter and verse um if you don't already know many of you have been with us and so in the first week the lord shared with us his concern was for the harvest laborers that's not the apostate church that's actually the laborers of the body in the body of christ and then the lord spoke to us um a second concern which i will reiterate here shortly after we read our scripture of worship so that all things are kept organized here as we process the mind of christ in this service on today all right so fasten your spiritual seat belts Let's Let's go before the throne of grace heaven dear heavenly father we bless you on this on this great day that you have made uh and we will rejoice and we will be glad in it father as we stand in your presence we dare not do it without your holiness being placed in and upon us so if there's any sin amongst us known and unknown we ask that we confess it to you now we ask that you forgive us and we ask that you bless us with your holiness and your righteousness to be in them in us to the point where when you look at us you do not see us but you see the lord jesus christ our master we humble ourselves in your hand we humble ourselves before you father somebody needs your great wisdom on today somebody needs your great power on today somebody is estranged from you today and needs to be brought back there are many that will hear this broadcast uh, throughout the time and throughout the years lord that are estranged from you we 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 thank you lord for placing anointing so strong in the word in these videos and upon these videos that when they hear it their salvation will be released to them and the anointing of the holy ghost and the baptism of the holy ghost will be released to them right through their screens and right as they hear the word of the lord that, it, that, that, that their faith will be increasing and will act as a portal to bring salvation and to bring the baptism of the Holy Ghost right into their hearts. And they will go forth and they will listen to the message. They will go forth being instructed and they will begin to bear fruit for you. Somebody needs to know you and the power of your provision this morning. Somebody is struggling in their household to pay their bills. Somebody this morning, both male and female, both husband and wife, is struggling with their children to make ends meet. Many are, many are perishing for famine right now. Lord, we we rebuke this. We rebuke those uh, uh, those measures in their home. We rebuke the satanic spirits that would bring those measures in their home to afflict them uh, and we send them to the abyss right now in the name of the Lord Jesus that deliverance will come healing will come your power by your presence will come right into the scene of their lives and into the scene of their homes to begin to deliver them to begin to set them free somebody right now many as they're listening they will hear this broadcast the moment the word proceeds through this screen it will hit their minds and they will be delivered from evil spirits and they will come back into their right mind many schizophrenic which 
is nothing more than the tormentors tormenting their minds. They have been turned over to the tormentors. Their minds will be, those those chains will be broke loose and those spirits will be cast into the abyss the moment they hear this word. Their minds will be set free and they'll be set free in their right mind and they can toss the medication out in the garbage. Somebody is going to be healed on this broadcast that when the word of the Lord comes forth and your spirit moves in the midst of that word, Holy Ghost, you will go and that leg will be healed. That arm will be healed. Those organs will be set right. That the blood disease will fall out. Those organs will begin to work not against themselves, but for the whole systematic process of the body. The mind will begin to work systemically. Alzheimer's will be driven out, and there will be clarity in the mind. The clouds and the mistiness, which is a demonic spirit of forgetfulness, will begin to leave the mind, and they will begin to be able to quote scriptures and remember whole passages in the Bible. Somebody's going to receive that gift on this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus, release your healing miracles and your gifts right now. Signs and wonders have followed my ministry for 30 years now and they will continue signs and wonders follow cox community church of dallas texas everywhere we go across the nation and around the world as we administer signs and wonders have showed up great signs and wonders minds have been changed about you great repentance has occurred in the name of the lord jesus father have your way in this war room on today and we'll be careful to give you the glory the honor and the praise lord somebody on this morning does not know you and the pardon of their sins lord release them from their sins right now wash them and make them white as snow though their sins be as scarlet lord let them come aside and reason with you that you can wash them and make them whiter than snow and they can receive the indwelling presence of your spirit and lord you can use them mightily for you are seeking the harvest laborers to come the harvest is ripe, and the labors are no longer few because lord you're sending your spirit forth to bring in the laborers that we can gather in the harvest lord send more co-laborers to cox community church of dallas texas send more finance to this ministry, Lord, that we may have the ability to go into more communities, cities, towns, and inquire of those cities and towns who is worthy of the Lord Jesus Christ and his kingdom. Lord, we need you on this morning. This ministry needs your help. This ministry needs your power. This ministry is your glory to the earth. This ministry is your manifold wisdom to the principalities and powers that be and mankind that is upon the earth. This ministry has received your glory. It works by your glory. It functions by your glory and it is blessed by your glory lord begin to send your sons and daughters from the north south east and the west we blow those winds into the earth realm lord begin to draw them you said if we lift you up you draw all men unto you draw them now by your spirit to this place lord because you have many miracles waiting on them many healings waiting on them many demonic castings out waiting on them lord you have many signs and miracles that you want to release lord that many of us have never even witnessed before do not even know available in the scriptures but lord you have anointed your servants in this time to know your scriptures and to know what's available in the spirit realm to all who will come and yield themselves and surrender themselves to the present to your presence and to your power and so father we thank you on today lord open the hands of those that are looking to be a blessing to the kingdom and send them to this house specifically lord for this is good ground for them to sow in and they will receive a return some 30 some 60 and some 100 fold according to the foreknowledge of your wisdom and your grace lord all power is in your hand your so sovereign over all men and all forces whether they be angelic or whether they be demonic you are the lord of hosts you are the lord of heaven's armies we appeal to you now all of these things as we stand before you lord your servant bows now in your presence my i humbly bow my heart before you lord speak to me as your oracle you have conditioned me you have worked with me you have invested in me and i mean to give you every talent that you've invested in me i mean to double it lord for your glory and so father i will walk with you in this word on today i will respond perfectly to everything that you're going to say through me i will not quench the holy ghost have your way in here holy ghost as only you can because you you are the master teacher father we honor you and we love you on this morning in king jesus name we pray let all of us who hear the spirit of the lord say amen and amen second timothy the second chapter thou therefore my son and this is the apostle paul talking to his son bishop timothy i like to say in the gospel although i believe timothy walked in the apostolic armor and went on as an apostle uh with the grace of the apostleship 
uh, thou therefore my son be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus there's the grace right there that I'm referring to and the things that thou hast heard of many uh, of, of me among many witnesses so this was not done in a closet or in the dark saints the same commit thou to faithful men so the anointing has to transfer here who shall be able to teach others also so that the anointing continuously transfers sets up the prophetic network in the earth realm because the Lord said the gospel must be preached to all nations and then the end will come but there are markers many do not understand there are markers in the scripture to how to know because the gospel has been propagated 21 centuries now so you say Lord but the Lord Jesus also said and that's why we have to put all of the scriptures in a synthesis and bring them together the Lord Jesus told the apostles you are not gone over this whole earth <laughs> before I come with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ he's simply saying that all of the things that will transpire in the earth realm on the prophetic timeline are going to require <clears throat> the gospel to not just some things will not just be performed in the first century uh church but they will be performed in the 21st century church as they were performed in the first century church now you say bishop why is that because the prophetic timeline has two things it has both actuality and glimpses of the actuality and right now in our time we are getting a glimpse of the entire book of revelation in particular today we're going to talk about the millennial reign of the lord jesus christ we're also going to talk about the judgment that comes before for the millennial reign fasten your seatbelt this is getting ready to blow your socks off if you're a student of the prophetic or if you're not well versed in the prophetic this is the real prophetic spirit of the lord jesus christ operating through his servants not this fake version where folks are running around i'm talking about i see i see let me explain something to you when you see something you don't have to say that you see you just need to proclaim it before the lord's people so they can hear and you need to teach them so they can understand that was a gold nugget for all of you that actually generally want to learn about the prophetic and how to transfer it now let me say this thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of the lord jesus christ okay no man that warth entangle himself with the affairs of this life why that he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier notice he didn't say that you wouldn't get distracted although that's true and there are many other things we can cite here but the goal of why we're not why we're enduring hardness as a good soldier of the lord jesus christ the goal of why we're uh, uh not entangling ourselves is not so much not to be distracted it's so that we can finish our course with joy and please the Lord Jesus Christ because all of us who are servants of the Lord Jesus Christ our main goal is to please him that he not say to us depart from me you work of iniquity I never knew you and those of us who are truly in the body of Christ no man on earth and no devil in hell can pluck us out of the hand of the Lord so we don't need to fear the Lord saying that to us we just need to keep soldiering forward all right notice in verse 3 but mean that the spirit of the Lord says thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of the Jesus uh, of Jesus Christ I say the spirit of the Lord even though we know it's Apostle Paul that he's communicating through the Spirit of the Lord says thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of, 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 of Jesus Christ and I like to say the Lord Jesus Christ and many of you know why and so notice the spirit of the lord and and the reason i say the spirit of the lord because this commandment is not just to the first century church it's to every century after it right up to the 21st century church which we are the body of christ in the 21st century all of us who are blood washed of the lord jesus christ born again by the regeneration and renewing of the holy ghost we are the ecclesia that's what you're saying when you say you are part of the ecclesia you're saying you're indwelt by the lord jesus christ he is your master and your owner and everything you say and do and everywhere you go and you do not everything that you say and you don't say everything that you do and don't do you are saying that the lord can intervene in your life at any time and direct you in the manner and he doesn't have to have your permission every time because you've already blanketly given your permission to come in uh, uh, namely when you said that you presented your body a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto the lord which is your reasonable service what you're actually saying in real time is lord you don't even have you have my permission for all time to interrupt my life at any moment to divinely interrupt it lead me direct me guide me give me what to say what not to say you are totally my heart might devise the way but you will always order my steps that's what we're saying when we say we presented our bodies as a living sacrifice thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of the lord jesus christ you know the issue here for us on today is that the lord is giving a great revival is getting ready to come okay but there are steps to great revival getting ready to come so it must be watered in prayer and fasting of which all of you many of you i've spoken to around the nation the holy ghost is moving all of us into long seasons of prayer and fasting many churches um 
and I've spoken to many of you. And so he's moving the body of Christ into long seasons of prayer and fasting. That's because revival is getting ready to come, but not just any revival, a revival that's going to give us a glimpse. I'm prophesying by the Holy Ghost right now. Fasten your spiritual seatbelt, get your notepad, pay attention, begin to write these things, record if you have to. It's already recorded on the video. Share with your family members. Those of you who are on right now or will be coming on, share, share, share. Please share because many people need to hear the word of the Lord. Come on, I'll preach this thing all by myself. I'll preach to this blank screen if I have to. But I'm telling you right now, the only one that will benefit is me. But I'm already benefited because I already understand these things. I'm on here because you need to understand these things. And I also understand Satan is fighting grotesquely against this ministry because he doesn't want this word to go forth because this word actually has power from this ministry to save, to heal, and to deliver, and to, and, and to set the captive free. And Satan doesn't want that. And not only uh, individual captives, but this word that I'm preaching can deliver nations. This word that I'm preaching right now can deliver destinies, can deliver genealogies. This word that I'm preaching because I labor for the Lord to receive the anointing to do, to do that as such. I wish somebody would hear the Holy Ghost on this broadcast and he would touch somebody besides me. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of the Lord Jesus Christ. See, the reason this broadcast is empty right now is because what has happened is many are going about and they're not honoring the sabbath day they're doing about doing their own thing and you say and i do realize that there are many in their own churches and various things like that but the reality is there are millions of us on this planet who don't go to church who don't pay attention to one thing and we're doing our own desire on the sabbath and we're doing our own thing and that's why many that's why many of the broadcasts even though they're powerful they have the anointing on the lord i'm watching all my brothers you know and you say bishop well there are some that have thousands hundred thousands even millions but there's 7.2 billion people on this planet why they're not 7.2 billion people worship in the Lord. I'll tell you why, because we're doing our own thing on Sunday, and it's brought judgment into the United States of America and upon the nations of the world. The Lord is telling us to endure hardness as good soldiers of the Lord Jesus of Christ, uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ, body of Christ. I'm speaking to you, body of Christ. I'm speaking to all of us, because the wicked are exiting from the earth in mass proportions. We have seven more plagues that are coming into the United States of America and the nations of the world. The fourth one to be released January 1st to March 31st of 2000 2023 the fourth plague will be released and we have six more after that going to the year 2030 if you are hearing the holy ghost if you are in if you have if you have sacrificed and suffered and stayed in communion before the lord and if your anointing is able to travel deep into that prophetic realm then you understand and you know first of all that the prophetic word i'm speaking is 1000 percent accurate the second thing that you know if you are able to go in that deep is you know that, that you know the exact time frame and you know exactly what's getting ready to occur but now if you don't know the Lord's made it easy because I just prophesied it to you and I've been prophesying for some time. And let me explain this. Unlike many uh, prophets who are less versed, unlike many prophets who do, who have less of a courage in their heart, which is not a condemnation or a knock against them, they just need to be strengthened of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's why my, I don't have all those issues. My heart is absolutely bold and strong before the Lord Jesus Christ. And when I come on these broadcasts, I'm not arguing with anybody. I didn't ask your opinion. You don't have an opinion far as I'm concerned before the Lord. Lord Jesus, he is the Lord of heaven's armies. He's not coming and asking us. He's coming and commanding us. I don't, people talk about me all the time. People have said some of the most grotesque things about me since I've been ministering here. I actually expected it before I came. It's been going on for 30 years. I've been called everything. You cast out demons by demons. You do this by demons. You're a witch. You're what I've heard it all. You're, you're disgusting. You're everything but a child of the king. But I'm going to tell you right now, it, it doesn't matter with me now because I'm dead in Christ. And so it doesn't matter what you say. It doesn't matter what you say I'm doing. It doesn't matter what you how you claim I'm casting out spirit. It doesn't matter all those things because nobody is arguing with you and nobody asked you. And so I have the boldness to know and not quench the spirit. I'm not. I didn't ask you what you thought about what the Lord is doing to me. I didn't ask you because I don't care. I didn't ask you because you weren't with me 18, 30 years ago when I was 18 years old and the Lord called me and anointed me. See the revelation I have. I didn't receive it by man, but I received it by uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I don't have to ask anybody's permission. I don't have to ask you whether I'm. I'm going to get up and preach this morning or what I'm going to minister or who I'm going to minister and what I'm the only thing I have to do is get up go before my master and say Lord whatever it is you want to do today you go ahead and do it and he begins to direct my path and show me and give me revelation I want you to go to this one don't go to that one stay from over there I open the door here but I close the door there and he begins to truly direct my path and I'm not talking about directing my path in the play version I'm talking in the spirit of the Lord and in the presence of the Holy Ghost come on and get it down in your spirit I'm trying to keep the preacher on the bench but I'm because 
because I really want to help us understand some things on the on this morning. Listen to me. We got to endure hardness as a good soldier of the Lord Jesus Christ because what these plagues have come forward and what they're designed to do is they are designed to usher in a, the next revival that is going to mirror and give us a glimpse of the millennial reign of the Lord Jesus Christ. But let me, what you say, Bishop, why is the Lord telling us to endure hardness as good soldiers? Because what I want to uh, remind you of in the scriptures, particularly in the book of Revelation, is the fact that before the millennial reign comes, before that thousand year reign comes, two things have to occur. Saints, please, please perceive and hear. Don't just have eyes that see but perceive the Holy Ghost. Don't just have ears that hear, but ask the Lord to give you understanding through those ears that actually can understand what the Holy Ghost is saying. Please hear me carefully. Two things have to occur before revival occurs, and it's not what many of you, I hear you prophesying, and I have no problem with it, but it's not what you're saying that has to occur. It's not all of these things. Yes, the ground, the ground is made holy by prayer and by saints that are willing to pray and to intercede and to suffer and to afflict their bodies and to fast because it hollows you from the things of this world and drives you deep into the things of the spirit and it is prayer and fasting that prepares the ground breaks up the uh, prepares the ground but it is the preach word unadulterated straight with no chaser not watering it down no watering down no adulterating straight powerfully that comes like a fire and falls like a hammer that is the sickle see in the book of revelation it says the apostle john said i saw the angel of the lord coming he had a sickle and he drove it into the earth well as there is a pattern in heaven so there must be in the earth. And so I was sharing with the saints earlier that when the angel of the Lord comes and he puts the sickle in the earth, there is an equivalent in the earth realm to that. And that is the man of God who comes with the sickle. A sickle is a sharp instrument that pierces a thing, that pierces a thing. And this is why I posted that the word of God, the only thing that's going to break the spiritual lethargy and apathy of mankind in the 21st century is the incision of the word of the Lord, making incisions in the hearts of men to cut them to the dividing line of soul and spirit and bring them to conviction to the Lord Jesus Christ. And when your gospel is too watered down, too user friendly, and let me tell you, the Lord Jesus said, a little lump leavens the whole, a little leaven leavens the whole lump. So if you water it down just a little bit, 99 and a half won't do, the old saints used to say and sing. Listen to me carefully. And so if you water it down even a little bit, just a half a percent, your gospel is infiltrated and it's contaminated and it's corrupt and it's not going to deliver anybody. The Lord, when that angel of the Lord has stuck a sickle in the earth. He has stuck it at present time. There are warriors coming forward like myself that are going to be the equivalent in the spirit realm, in the earth realm. And the word that we're preaching is the sickle that's being stuck into the atmosphere in this earth realm where men live, that they might hear the Holy Ghost and be delivered by the Lord Jesus Christ and by his mighty power. Please hear my wisdom in the Holy Ghost at present time. And so I've come into Dallas, Texas, the place where the Lord desires for great. So you can't just say great revival is coming out of your city and coming out of this place. You can say that, but do you have a revelation? I, my revelation is not that revival is coming out of Dallas, Texas. My revelation is that it's going to start here and go to the rest of the world. So those of you that are prophesying that it's coming to your city, it is, but it's not gonna start there. It's gonna start here in Dallas, Texas. The Lord had to bypass the gate of America in New York City where all the nations were gathered because the corruption and the wickedness was too great and they would not listen to the Lord so the most egregious most egregious part and extreme part of these ten plagues the first three have fallen on New York City harder than any other place in the United States of America or in the world okay and that's going to continue for seven more plagues to 2030 if we refuse to repent and the spirit has made me clear we are so we are prompt more than so i absolutely know that we're going to reach all 10 of those plagues okay come on and let's get it in our spirit but after that we are going to see great redemption great redemption now it's not that it hasn't started but i'm talking about on a massive corporate level on a massive corporate level because if this revival doesn't come forward the lord will have to remove the church out of the earth realm and out of the earth realm and pour his wrath out on upon the earth realm i.e. the rapture of the church and then the tribulation first three and a half years that leads to the great tribulation the last three and a half years i know i'm talking in the holy i know i'm teaching us in the holy ghost and preaching in the holy ghost on this morning i'm trying to keep the preacher on the bench i promise you i'm going to do my best to do it but i'm telling you right now i get excited in the firepower of the holy ghost i'm 
excited about what the Lord has shown me. I'm excited about what he wants to do because for the believer, for us to live in Christ is, is to, for us to live as Christ and for us to die is gain. So it doesn't matter. Listen, it's not going to matter. We're going to be raptured out of here. The rest of you are going to be left behind. So either way it goes, we're in good standing with the Lord Jesus Christ. We are covered in the blood of the lamb. We are sealed up. We have received uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, down payment of the purchase possession. Our inheritance is secure in heaven because we're secure in the hand of the Lord. So we are here for your benefit. We, the body of Christ, is here for the nations of the world's benefit. For the corporate international community, the body of Christ is here for your benefit. Because we, if we're removed, the restraining force is removed. And every devil in hell will hit this place. And he and the Lord says they, his wrath will be poured out so greatly. These demons will come so greatly. Satanist forces will come to the Antichrist and, and the false prophets so greatly that the Lord says, if I didn't shorten those days, no flesh would survive. Come on and let's get it down in our spirit. And let's be intelligent and mature in the Holy Ghost. Spiritually intelligent, I'm referring to in the Holy Ghost on this morning. We have to endure hardness as good soldiers of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because if you understand the prophetic timeline, two things come before you get to the millennial reign. One is... <clears throat> Great evil has to abound first. So all hell has to break loose, usually in the form of war. So we have one coming. That's why we're hearing wars and rumors of wars. And it won't just be rumors of wars. There will be wars. They're, they are coming. And we already see Russia invading Ukraine, but it's going to kick up a notch. There's going to be more than just that. And I prophesied, according to Jeremiah 15, there's going to come one so great that great evils have been committed on the United States of America and the allied nations in the border of Israel. It's shaping up right now. We're already there. You say, Bishop, is the word. somebody said, oh, well, what if the prophet's word doesn't come to pass? You're late to the, you're late to the gathering. It's already coming to pass. It's already started. You're late. You're late. You're late because you didn't hear the spirit and you showed up to the marriage supper of the lamb late. And many of you still haven't showed up at all. So I, I bless the Lord because you still have time. When, if we were to be raptured, you'd have no more time. So you better get in right now while you have a chance. That's a warning and a caution to all of you in the apostate church and you that are outside the commonwealth of the general assembly and church of the firstborn of the Lord Jesus Christ, it's a warning now to get yourself in while you still have a chance. Not my assignment today, but the Holy Ghost wanted me to give that invitation, so I give it to you. We're encountering the Lord Jesus Christ in these worship services here in Dallas, Texas at Cox Community Church. We're not coming to have church. We're coming to encounter the Lord. To, in other words, to, years ago, I preached a message uh, in, uh, in, uh, uh, um, in New York City uh, at a church there, was at a mega church there, it was called uh, Collision with Heaven, okay? Collision with Heaven. And I'm telling you right now, um, don't go looking for it because it wasn't on YouTube. There was no YouTube at the time when I preached it. So don't go looking for it. It's not on any of your sites because none of that stuff existed when I preached it. So don't go looking for it. But just, you're just going to have to, the Holy Ghost going to have to bear me witness in your spirit as a trust and servant of the Lord. But years ago, I preached a message called Collision with Heaven. See, when I first started preaching, we're still on audio tape. I don't mind dating myself because I don't care because the Lord has blessed me. But when I first started preaching, I was on audio tape. Then it went to CD. Then it went to MP3 DVD. Then I was on radio. Then I was on TV. Now I'm on all the social media platforms. I've been preaching the gospel a long time. I'm not a new jack. Don't fool with the anointing and the power of the Holy Ghost on my life because you're asking for it and I don't want you to receive it. And that's why I'm interceding and praying on your behalf. All of you, those of you that wickedly keep saying something, don't think I'm studying you. I sleep peacefully at night. It's not bothering me, but it is bothering you because you're being tormented by demons right now because you've been turned over to the tormentors by the spirit of the Lord for your insolence to his grace, to his mercy and to his sovereignty and most importantly to his invitation to you to come into the kingdom so i need to also encounter you i also need to give you that warning and that encounter as well but two things have to happen before this great revival comes and they are they are mirroring or they are giving us a glimpse into the book of revelation the great revival is nothing more in real time than a glimpse of the millennial reign of the lord jesus christ so this great revival that everyone's been talking about the last uh biblical uh uh, uh season and age the last 30 to 50 years uh, I, I like to say 40 years, the last 40 years. Uh, because I like to work by biblical numbers. So the last 40 years that we've all been prophesying and preaching and praying for this great revival to come forward, don't sweat. It's coming forward. The problem is, is that we have to understand on the prophetic timeline, we have to understand where we are. So we are getting a glimpse. Okay, we are getting a glimpse. I prophesied this uh, probably a year and a half, two years ago, maybe longer, uh, that, that, that we are going to get a whole glimpse of the book of Revelation in the 21st century church. We are smack dab in the middle of it right now. When the Lord opens up the seals, he begins 
begins to open up the seals in the book of Revelation. Then come, then the trumpet judgments, then the vile trumpet judgments. Notice that plagues and all type of plagues begin to hit the earth. All type, the four horsemen of the apocalypse begin to ride, and these great destroyers begin to wreak all kind of havoc in the earth. They are riding right now, saints. They are riding right now, saints. I'm going to go around that block again for the for those that 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 just uh, it, it hasn't sunk in deep yet. They are riding right now, saints. That's why we're seeing everything that we're seeing. But before this millennial reign, glimpse of the millennial reign comes, i.e. the revival, two things have to occur. And this is why the Lord's telling us to endure hardness as a good soldier of the Lord Jesus Christ. The first thing, a mass exodus of wicked souls has to happen. So how would the Lord do that? It's already been given in heaven. How would it come in earth? By war. That's by plagues, by famine, by war, by the four horsemen riding. Everything the four horsemen represent, going forth to conquer the white horse, that's Putin right now, trying to conquer the nation of Ukraine. I know many of you mistake that and you thought it was the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not. Because if you read Zechariah uh, the uh, sixth chapter and you read Jeremiah the 15th chapter, those same four spirits are prophesied previously in the Old Testament in both those uh, prophets' passages and those four spirits are are listed as destroyers. So the Lord Jesus Christ is the God of all life. He's not a destroyer. So that white horse is not the Lord Jesus Christ in the Old Testament proves that it's not the Lord Jesus Christ. I know many of you have prophesied that, have taught that wrongly and it's okay. The Lord give you understanding. He's not against you, but he does want to correct that in your understanding. Those are four kinds of destroyers. I have a video called Four Kinds of Destroyers. I, I, I Go on YouTube, hit hit the subscribe button, hit the notification button so you can get it, uh, get these teachings when they come up. But I have a video there called Four Kinds of Destroyers, teaching out of Jeremiah, the 15th chapter. Go ahead and view that and 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 and, and, uh, and do some homework there and let the Holy Ghost speak to you. And I believe he'll give you the same revelation he's given me and get you up to par here. All right, so that white horse is not the Lord Jesus Christ. It is the spirit of Antichrist through deception. And the Apostle John said, you have many that, you, he said, there are many Antichrists that have come into the world. World. Putin is one of them, and so he is the he is the actual embodiment of that white horse riding forward to destroy. And we got Xi Jinping over there in China. He's another embodiment of it. That's why the apostle uh, John says there are many antichrists that's gone. He said you heard there are many antichrists. He said but the but the but the he said the spirit of antichrist. That's what we got to pay attention to. That we're not deceived and we're not looking. In other words, uh, in the wrong direction, away from where the Lord wants us to be seen, wants us to be uh, viewing and where he wants us to be seen all right body of Christ that's why he's coming to to teach us on today and to and 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 to uh and to get us straight here so that we're not deceived so two things have to happen one is a mass exodus of wicked souls has to occur that's the battle of Armageddon if you understand in the revelatory knowledge and power of the word you will understand that the that the that the battle of Armageddon is nothing more than than a than a weapon that is than a judgment that's designed to create a mass exodus of the wicked from the earth. You say, Bishop, why would the Lord do that? He already told you, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. That's what that means. And so whenever the Lord gets before this millennial reign, a war will break out that will come in. And it's not about the war, saints. It's not about the war. We have to look in the spirit. It's not about the war. It's not about the blood rising as high as the horses by all that. That stuff is not, it is meant to warn us. It's not cause us to fear. But that stuff doesn't even pertain to the body of Christ because we won't be here when it occurs. So we, that's why the Lord said, I've given you, I've not given you the spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. We won't be here. But all of you that won't embrace the rapture, you will be here because it'll be according to your faith. Come on and hear the wisdom of the Holy Ghost here and change your position with this with this rapture issue because it'll be according to our faith. I remember preaching. I was going strong in the rapture and the Lord said, son, I want you to preach as I want you. But listen, in your spirit, just calm it down because listen, it's going to be according to their faith. If they don't want to receive the word, they are not going to be taken up in the rapture. So please, young prophets, I prophesied this many weeks ago. Don't let these older prophets trick you out of of your blessing of the rapture because Satan has sent them to deceive you and many of them he's operating through them and they don't even know it. I'm not saying they're bad people. I'm not saying they don't love the Lord. I'm not saying they don't belong to the Lord. But what I'm saying is there's something in their heart that has become an open door that he can speak to them to trick you. Don't let them trick you. Don't let them trick you. Don't let them trick you. I cannot stress it enough. So war is not war is designed this 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 uh uh, uh you got the white rider and then you got the red rider and the black rider and then the 
Hell Rider. Okay, so the Red Rider is the one that comes to make war that steals the peace amongst the brethren where they begin to kill each other. That is all designed. These destroyers are not evil. They are spirits that come. You know where the four horsemen come from? From the throne of the Lord. Look who opened the seals. You say, Bishop, how do you know they come from the throne of the Lord? Go to Zechariah, the sixth chapter, and start in the first verse, and it will tell you that those four destroyers come from the throne of God. They are not evil spirits. They work in tandem with the demonic spirits, the demonic kingdom, but they are not demonic. They are simply spirits that minister before the Lord to do his bidding. Well, Bishop, they're causing great evil. Yes, they are, but it is necessary evil. They are not evil themselves, but they are causing great evil. They're like the spirit who went to be a lying spirit in the mouth uh, of King Ahab in the days of, uh, of Micaiah the prophet. Come on and get it down your spirit. We got to get some understanding in the spirit realm. Listen to me and listen to me carefully and let's get this down in our spirit so there has to come a mass exodus of the wicked before this glimpse of the millennial reign it must happen the second thing that has to happen before uh this this, this glimpse of the millennial reign is the powers of satan you notice a great angel ascended uh and laid hold on the dragon and bound him chained him and bound him in a pit for a thousand years this is nothing more than the imagery in the heavenlies of the lord binding the spirits that are attempting and that are causing so much havoc in the earth they will be bound for a season we will see it in our lifetime come on i know i'm prophesying in the holy ghost the murder rates will plummet the rape rates will plummet. All of these rates will plummet. The theft rate will plummet. Can I tell you right now, I grew up in Detroit where it was a murder capital for 30 years. It was number three last year on the list. Can I tell you this? I, I've been seeing many rep multiple reports now where the murder rate and these are the secular uh, prophets or the secular heads I refer that many of us refer to. I like to say prophets because I'm holy. Many of these secular prophets, they are prophesying right now. They don't have the Holy Ghost, but they are, they are saying that the murder rates are plummeting. See, it's already begun. I prophesy this a year and a half two years ago it's already begun it's all the lord's already because we have preached we have broken up the fallow ground according to the prophet Hosea. we have broken up the fallow ground it is already going on listen to me and hear what the holy ghost is saying carefully please hear what the holy ghost is saying he that hath ear let him hear what the holy ghost is saying to the body of christ it has already begun we're already in the throes of it now there is coming a mass exodus of the wicked it is already started it goes in phases do do you know in the book of Revelation that the trumpet, that the seal judgments are in phases? The trumpet judgments are in phases. The vile or bold judgments are in phases. Three forms of the Lord's wrath, they're all in phases. And the fact that there are three of them shows that the mercy of the Lord and his judgment is even measured out in phases, even though no man can stand before him. And that's why there are ten plagues. That's why they're being released at intervals, because in the mercy of the Lord, he's given you time to repent, all of you who are far from him. He's given you time to repent and come into the kingdom and receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost so that you can take part in this great revival. You are the harvest. You are the ones we're reaching out to. You are the ones that the Holy Ghost is drawn, that the Lord Jesus by his Holy Ghost is drawn to himself. You are the ones that we have come for. You are the ones that we have come to minister to. You are the ones that we are calling in the darkness in the midst of such grotesque darkness, darkness that has covered the face of the earth grow dark gross darkness to people you are the ones that we are speaking in the darkness to calling you forth out of that darkness and into the marvelous light i tell you i feel like shouting in this place i feel like worshiping in this place i feel like jumping out this window i don't know what i feel like doing but i'm in the firepower of the holy ghost listen to me a great mass exodus of the wicked must occur and the second thing is satan's forces must be bound that's why all of you intercessors you're getting an uptick and dreams and vision i had one last night myself a dream and i rarely dream i have have them but I'm not a dreamer I'm more the Lord deals with me since I was 18 actually no all my life I have to go back to five years old was the first time I had a vision from the Lord and I didn't know it was from the Lord the Lord has dealt with me in visions all my life okay so please understand that I, I heard one prophet say the primary way the Lord speaks to us is in dreams I tell you this I believe that it's dreams and visions the Lord said your old men will dream dreams your young men will see visions I do I will let that stand if you believe the primary way the Lord speaks to us is in dreams I have no problem with that but I'm gonna tell you this he's not speaking to all of us all the time in dreams because he has spoke to me in visions the majority of my life he deals with me in visions and I'll tell you why most of the time when people dream the prophet also said this most of the time when people 
people dream is because the Lord uh, attempted to speak something to you and you missed it. The reason the Lord speaks to me in visions is because uh, when I have dreams, the Lord is showing me things that are so magnanimous. And can I tell you something? Uh, all the dreams he showed me have come to pass and, the, and, and, and I have the ability to, I have the skill to interpret them and I know exactly what the Lord is saying to me and I know exactly when the dream was brought to pass. And there's one he gave me before this one. This one is being brought pa to pass right now as he gave it to me last night. But there's another one that's still waiting, that's still waiting uh, to be brought to pass and it will be brought to pass because the Lord has never failed in a dream he's given me. But I don't primarily dream, so when I have one, we really have to pay careful attention. And it was not because I missed what the Lord said. Let me state that at the outset. It is because the Lord wanted me to encourage the body of Christ. It is something that I have long immersed myself in, but he wanted me to encourage the body of Christ. And so um, the dream I noticed, it could have happened at any point, but it happened right before I woke up. And then I got online, and many of you that are connected to our ministry, uh, you see it online there, okay? So the Lord sent me to, uh, he gave me this dream just to encourage you. The dream didn't last long. It was, like a, it was like a whisper, but it was to encourage all of you, all right? So the second thing that has to happen is the powers of Satan have to be bound. Please hear me carefully. This is why all you intercessors are experiencing an uptick in your dream and in your visions the Lord is going to do whatever it takes it's all out reckless abandon to get you to hear and to understand and I don't have a problem with any of the prophets and the men of God I love you please don't email me or write me I love you I'm with you I don't speak against anybody unless the Lord gives me the lead to speak I have not called names in 30 years but when I came to Dallas Texas the Lord commanded me to call certain names not all names that he showed me but names that he uh, specifically told me to call because they're part of the strategy of breaking the power of Satan in the Dallas Fort Worth area because until this area is brought under construction of the Lord Jesus Christ and it's happening right now and until we reach a certain phase where we can build and plan the revival will only come forward from Dallas Texas from Dallas Texas to the nation to the nation and then the nations of the world when we get to the phase of building and planting come on and let's get it down our spirit that's why this word's been heavy that's why this word is set like a fire that's why many of you have witnessed and you know I had a prophetess tell me years ago Bishop I saw you standing sending that word forth like fire and like a hammer well she she did not miss because the, I. this now is the fulfillment of her prophetic word. It's the three years I've been in Dallas, Texas. Come on, don't fool with the servants of the Lord because we can see into the Spirit and the Holy Ghost gives us revelation. The angel of the Lord is with us. Angels are accompanying us. We are no joke and we're not fooling around. And I'm going to tell you, I'm a different kind of servant because some of you, the Lord had to take you to hell to believe. But I'm going to tell you, I've been preaching on hell for 30 years and I, the Lord's never taken me there. I've seen people there, but he's never had to take me there because I'm a different type of servant. And there are servants like me, and you can't fool with us. I'm the sir. I'm I'm what I like to call an observing son or an observing son. I've been like this all my life because the Lord gifted me this way. The Lord doesn't have to take me to to hell to know it's real. He just has to tell me it is and give me the revelation as to why it is. And when He did that, I'll preach it as if I've been there. And that's why so many people been delivered from hell is because you know what? I took him at his word. Come on, I got that centurion kind of faith. Come on and get it in your spirit. And he kicked it up a notch because I got the centurion kind of faith with the Holy Ghost in me. He told. Thomas he said you believe because you've seen but blessed are those there is a power released in those of us that have never seen and yet believe it is a different power than those of you that have seen and then you want to believe it is a different power now it's from the same spirit and we are all brothers and sisters in Christ but please be aware there are servants of us that have not come in the Lord Jesus Christ in the same manner you have we come in one spirit been baptized into one spirit but we operate a little bit differently because you know what I don't have to see in order to believe the Lord just tells me in my ear and I tell people and I prophesy. I don't prophesy by sight. I don't prophesy because I saw you there. I don't prophesy by dreams and I don't prophesy. I prophesy because the Lord has speaking to me and he is telling me and I just say what he tells me. So I don't have to see you. I don't have to see you. And then there are times I do see you. And then there are times I do. He does minister that way. But I'm telling you he can minister both ways to me because he doesn't even have to show me and I can tell you exactly what it was as if I was there. I'm telling you right now in the fire power of the Holy Ghost. Let's come on and let's get, and the Lord is bringing servants like us forward and he's bringing us and many of you and I praise the Lord for my younger brothers and sisters I see coming forward because I see the same gift in you and he's using you mightily and I bless the Lord and I praise the Lord for you magnanimously and I'm going to tell you right now, we have got to come forward every generation in waves and we have got to work 
in this harbors as laborers, we have got to do what the Lord's called us to do where he's planted us. Many of us, he shifted. I got friends that were in Florida that he shifted to Charlotte, uh, many of them. And then there are others that I'm aware of that, that I don't necessarily, uh, uh, actually we are friends, uh, even them, um, and they have been shifted, and we've been shifted all around the country. I was brought, I was taken from Michigan to New York. I ministered there 23 years, and then the Lord sent me to Dallas, Texas to break up the fallow ground here as an apostle. He sends me forth. I've gone all over this country and outside of it preached all to the nations of the world listen to me and no one knows my name and you don't need to know it what you need to know is the lord jesus christ because everybody that does know me knows the lord used me mightily and knows that the power of god is in with me and upon me and operating through me and i and i actually like that nobody knows my name i actually like that nobody knows me because then it can't be tampered with by the devil see i move i don't move in secret i'm not incognito i don't move it's not like i'm trying to not let nobody know my name it's just that everybody who knows me you know me because I go into the hedges and the highways. See, I'm not trying. I've been in so many pulpits, but I'm not trying to get the pulpits. I'm not trying to call people and let me come to your church and let me preach for you. And let me no, 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 ma'am, no, sir, no, sir, no, ma'am. I am the one that is going into the byways in the byways. The reason you may not know my name unless you know me is because I'm not where you're looking for me. You're looking for me in pulpits. I, the world is my pulpit, and I, there are many like me that you don't know our names. But I promise you, if I lay my hands on you or i can speak a word or i can touch something send it to your house your child will be healed we've had we were talking today about miracles where two men were healed from pancreatic cancer didn't even lay my hands on them i just asked them according to your faith do you believe the lord can heal you and the lord healed them of pancreatic cancer listen to me carefully i just prayed for him and the lord healed because i have no healing power i have nothing the lord jesus is the healer i'm not the healer he's the one with all the power i don't have any power in my hand he has all power in his hand but he desires to use vessels that will yield themselves to him and he desires to use me because I continually yield and surrender to him in prayer and fasting and in the Holy Ghost and in the word of the Lord and in the preaching of the gospel and in the teaching of the gospel. Listen to me carefully. So Satan's forces have to be bound. Intercessors, that's why there's an uptick an uptick in what it is that you're experiencing right now because the Lord is, is, is bringing us and he is bringing us uh, into a glorious place where the principalities and powers have to be bound now to, set, uh, to open up the way for this glimpse of the millennial reign i.e. the revival that we've all been waiting on the past four years. Go with me to 2 Peter. Let's get into 2 Peter. i got to move along here. I don't want to keep us too long today. Let's go to 2 Peter. I don't want to give too much because sometimes it's a too much. And uh, folks have even said, Bishop, you know, sometimes it's too much. So I want to yield uh, in the presence of the Lord. I want to let the Holy Ghost have his way. But I also want to keep in mind uh, what those of you, uh, you know, you, you say you feel like it's too much. I know the Lord will bring you up and he will strengthen you to be it because he wouldn't put more any more on you than you're able to bear up under. Listen to me. Now, listen to the Holy Ghost carefully. Listen to the Holy Ghost carefully. Go with me to 2 Peter, the second chapter. 2 Peter, the second chapter. And what I want to look at is I'm going to read the fourth. Let me pull my Bible out here. The fourth through the sixth verse. So The fourth through the sixth verse. Okay? So I'm going to read, I'm going to read uh, Hebrews. I mean, not Hebrews. We're in 2 Peter, the second chapter, the fourth through the sixth verse. 2 Peter, second chapter, the fourth through the sixth verse. All right? 2 Peter, second chapter, the fourth through the sixth verse. But let me say this. We need to be fully aware of this. Uh, about a week or two ago, uh, the second time that we came together and we dug into Second Peter here, what the Lord laid in my heart, and before I say that, let me take a sip of, uh, sip of my stuff here. Um... We're talking about, see, see. here's what we have to understand. There's a mass ex exodus of the wicked that has to occur. It's happening right now. That is the purpose of these ten plagues. Hell is enlarging herself. I prophesied this when I was preaching uh, um, last Sunday or the Sunday before. And if you missed it, go on the Facebook ministry page. My team is working diligently. It'll be up on YouTube today. And you can receive it on YouTube for those of you who haven't viewed it yet. And the Spirit of the Lord had me speak to us and prophet he prophesied to us he gave us wisdom that there's a mass exodus of wicked of the wicked that's happening in the present time because he is setting up the earth for the meek to inherit it notice i didn't say the saved notice i didn't say the holy ghost filled i said the meek you don't have to be holy ghost filled to be meek now meekness is a gift of the holy ghost 
okay? It is one of the gifts that he imparts. But let me explain something to you. Meekness is just simply humbling yourself before the Lord. And the Lord can help you do it. If you don't want to do it willingly, he can help you do it forcibly. It's your choice. But he can help you. Now, the question is, you get to choose what kind of help. And you say, Bishop, how do you know that? Because the word of the Lord says, the, I hear the word of the Lord saying, I set before you this day life and death. Choose life that you may live. Are we all on the same page? I hope that we are, and I hope the Holy Ghost is touching somebody else beside me on this broadcast on this morning. And I'm not holding my head because I have a headache, by the way, so don't even start praying. I'm doing this because the firepower of the Holy Ghost is so strong in me. It's like a raging inferno that I just marvel in his presence and at his power. Listen to me carefully. A mass exodus of the wicked. So the Lord cautioned us, body of Christ, that we must understand this and we must not stand there and begin to malfunction in the spirit, sympathizing with this mechanism, sympathizing with these people, sympathizing with what's happening to them because the Lord, and you say, Bishop, why is that? See, and Satan will build this kind of resistance in us. So I took us through uh, Zechariah, the third chapter, and Psalms, the fifth chapter. I took us through these mighty chapters and I read to us because the Lord wants to strengthen us. As you see, the wicked departing. Are you saying, Bishop, that everybody's departing is wicked? No, but I'm saying that the majority of them are. Mm -hmm. Because that's the purpose of this. These are people that for 60, 70, and 80 years, 20 years, 40 years, whatever the case may be, mostly uh, uh, of that baby boomer generation don't have time to get that prophesied that before. Again, on all the four mentioned platforms, you can get those teachings, not my assignment today. I prophesy concerning the baby boomer generation. I prophesy concerning my generation. We're one. We're the next generation after baby boomer generation. Judgment of the Lord has not come to my children's generation uh, 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 yet. And so... And so, it, it, but it has fallen on the baby boomer generation. It has fallen on our generation. We're set. Which means whoever is going to accept the Lord has already done it. Whoever's rejected has rejected completely. So these souls are being removed because they're reprobate. They're not going to receive the Lord Jesus no matter. He's already given them a full a stroke of time. And they have not accepted him and he already knows they're not going to. We just don't know that. But now we know that because the Holy Ghost gives us revelation to know that. That the that, uh, that the baby boomer generation, whoever's going to accept or reject, it's already settled. There be it. So all of those that are rejected are being removed right now. I, I say this because my father has received a life extension and my father is still with us. He'll be uh, 85, 86 come October. He has received, next month actually, he has received a life extension. He is the symbol of things to come. He is. I am. And others like me, we are symbols of things to come. That's why I preach that. If you missed that message, go on the Facebook ministry page. It is on there for you. My team's working to bring it up on YouTube. Symbols of things to come is the title of the message in our series, The Words of His Holiness. Symbols of things to come. This, mess, this ministry is highly prophetic because the Lord's been dealing with the prophetic for 30 years now. And it's not the play version either. Don't play with me. Because I not only have the revelation of the Holy Ghost, I have a THD in doing this. I have a doctorate. This is no game. So I am not just speaking by the revelation of the Holy Ghost. I'm speaking by skilled understanding as the Holy Ghost has built it in me through, through erudition. Don't fool yourself. I'm like a modern day Apostle Paul. Don't fool yourself. Please don't do it. The Holy Ghost has sent me as a gift. And all of you that keep cursing me had a witch to, uh, not too long ago cursing me to death. Come on and get it in your spirit. I, I'm not worried about it because this ministry draws that kind of ire. This, this word that I'm preaching, it draws snakes out of the corner and serpents. But I got power over all of them. I'm not saying that because I fear I'm not saying that to give glory to the devil. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that because I got power over this witch. I, 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 listen, put that witch down in two seconds and kept it moving. Come on and get it in your spirit. No witch can hex me. No no warlock can hex me and cast a, yeah, that's all demise. You go back to the abyss from where you came from. You ain't got nothing over here. Satan can come. He's not going to find anything in me because he don't have anything in me. Come on and let's get it down in our spirit. I'm telling you, I'm in the firepower of the Holy Ghost on today. Satan will build this kind of resistance in us to sympathize with these wicked because they are related to us, but though hand join in hand. Let me remind this body of Christ, the wicked will not go unpunished. I don't care if they're your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, your best friend uh, for all of your life, I, your BFF. I don't care what these people are. You need to endure hardness as a good, good soldier of the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, you are 
not to put your mother, father, and sister, and brother before me, or you are not worthy of me. Take up your cross and follow me. You are not to have anybody before the Lord Jesus Christ. If you do it, you are not worthy of him. Come out and get in your spirit. Don't let Satan resist in your mind to resist the fact that the wicked are leaving here. Read Psalms 9 chapter. I've been prophesying, preaching it for three years now. The wicked shall be turned into hell and every nation that forgets God. Get it? in your spirit and do it yesterday this is not a game and it is not a joke listen to me carefully you say bishop what is the answer i'm glad you asked i'll give it to you listen let's read let's read second peter the second chapter in the fourth verse for if god spared not the angels that sin it said god it didn't say satan for God spared not the angels that sin, but cast them down to hell, to hell, all of you talking about there's no hell, he cast them to hell, hell, H-E-L-L, -L, hell, for all of you that don't want to preach hell, and you say it's not a part of the gospel, it is a part of the gospel, because I'm reading it right now, and I know I got the Holy Ghost, so if you got the Holy Ghost, stop saying that stuff, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment, and spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of who? The ungodly. I know that's your boo-boo, and your shaniqui, and your takuiqui, and all the rest of that stuff, but let me tell you something. You know why the Lord's opening the wicked up, the hell has enlarged herself to receive the wicked, and why the Lord is allowing this? It's because he's giving you all the time he's going to give you. The time wasn't indefinite, and and the generation before me is sealed now, and my generation is sealed. Whoever's going to believe, believes. Whoever's not, is not. It is done, but that's why the Lord has sent our ministry to begin to minister to the younger generations, because their time is fresh and still running but their time will run out eventually maybe 40 years from now should the lord tear in the rapture but it will run out come on and let's get it in your spirit and turning the cities of sodom and gomorrah into ashes condemn them with an overthrow making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly so it wasn't just about overthrowing sodom and gomorrah and sending all them people to hell the hell just i mean right into smack dab into hell it was about every generation after sodom and gomorrah who wanted to live ungodly you were in jeopardy of suffering the same thing and now it is happening in our time there is a mass exodus of the wicked at present time started in 2020 and it will culminate in 2030 and if we refuse to repent by 2030 we could go as much as 2035 already prophesied that so i believe that we are going to repent if we're smart and we're going to get on track and let the lord remove his judging hand from us because it is certainly heavy upon Upon the United States of America and the nations of the world. Now, you say, Bishop, how am I going to avoid sympathizing with the wicked? Can I tell you the first thing is, you know how I know this is because the Lord has put his mind into my mind and my heart to understand, son, I don't judge by the outward appearance. I judge according to the heart. Why? Because my word says that the heart is desperately wicked and deceitful above all who can know it, but I, the Lord, try the reins of the heart please hear the holy ghost and the proclamation of his word by his presence and his power demonstrated here on this broadcast today in this worship gathering the lord says i judge after the heart and all things are open and naked before me i am looking at your loved one's heart and i don't care how good you think they are they have rejected my son and i will not offer anything but my son to them and when you utterly reject him there is now no more reason for you to be in the earth and so I'm allowing your choice and the consequences of your choice to overtake you please hear the prophesying of the Holy Ghost and you need to do it as soon as possible because this is happening in your midst and it is bringing great sorrow desolation to many of your households but it will bring redemption to you the moment you begin to cry out to the Lord Jesus Christ I bind the spirit and I break the altar of bitterness towards the Lord and towards the suffering that you're going through your sympathy sympathizing with your suffering. You're sympathizing in your own righteousness. You're sympathizing in the righteousness and goodness of those that you have lost. But the Lord says, I am the Lord. All souls belong to me. You are to cease and desist. You're sympathizing and you're empathizing and you are to get in the firepower of my spirit and walk in my holiness because it is my holiness that is going to save you, not what you think about your loved ones. Your loved ones have rejected my son. My holiness demands an answer and my 
my holiness demands an answer and I determine when the answer is to be I said I will repay saith the Lord vengeance is mine I will repay saith the Lord and I am now repaying and I am telling you I have sent it and you will not stop it you cannot pray it away this is happening whether you like it or not and I break as the servant of the Lord the power of bitterness against the Lord Jesus Christ because you have lost your loved ones you are blaming God I break that demonic power right now in the name of Jesus that your mind will be healed your mind will be clear and you will be able to go forward and understand and receive the holiness of the Lord because they are gone and there's nothing else you can do about it and many of you are having false demonic visions and dreams of your loved ones but the dead speak not they are not speaking to you they are not coming to you the Lord can give you and show you certain things true but that's not what's happening to many of you demons are dealing with you and telling you it's the Lord and it is not the Lord allowed these people to receive the consequences of rejecting his son and this mass exodus is what's going to lead to the revival so we must understand the holiness of the Lord we got to settle the holiness of the Lord in our hearts in order to stand strong in this time but the days of Elisha are here the days of rest are restoring the breach and restoring the paths the old paths of holiness to walk in these days are here we were in high worship and every worship song that came forward this morning of the songs of the old saints that we used to sing up because we grew up in the holiness churches in the firepower of the Holy Ghost with the old saints and that was our worship here in Dallas Texas this morning at Cox Community Church of Dallas Texas and if you want to get in this firepower you call us call that church line we'll bring it to you baby and the Holy Ghost will break out where we are we're taking church to you you don't have to come to our church we'll bring it to you come on and get it in your spirit go with me to Acts the fourth chapter let's get this firepower this morning come on in the Holy Ghost I don't know whether I'm going to be able to stay upon the earth I feel like flying into the heavens right now come on and get it in your spirit Amos let's go to Amos the fourth chapter Amos the fourth chapter we got a little bit of reading but we're we're good on time we got a little bit of reading so let me start reading Amos the fourth chapter I want you to look right at the second verse Amos the fourth chapter I'm gonna start reading as soon as I take a sip of my coffee here Amos the fourth chapter and the second verse Amos the fourth chapter and the second verse <laughs> The Lord God had sworn by, first of all, I want to greet all of you that are watching with us. The Lord Jesus Christ bless all of you. We love our first lady. I told you she was in the war room with us. We honor her presence with us. Um, she's working diligently behind the scenes, making everything what it needs to be for you all. So bless your first lady. Get her cash app, bless her, because she's the one that's making many things that you see in this ministry go forward. And so we bless the Lord for her. The Lord God had sworn, Amos the fourth chapter, second verse, the Lord God had sworn by his holiness. That is the chief statement of what is being said right here. We have to understand the holiness of the Lord. The holiness of the Lord is not him just extending his grace uh, to you uh, and you reject him and it's going to last eternally. Mm-mm. Your salvation can last eternally, but the invitation of it will not. Come on and get it in your spirit. The invitation of it will not when you continuously reject it. Eventually, the Lord's holiness demands an answer, and that answer is your destruction by your own choice. Come on and let's go up and get some wisdom in the Holy Ghost. The Lord God that's sworn by his holiness, sworn, sworn. Why? Because his holiness is communicated in his word, both the written word and the living word, his son. And when you reject his son, you have rejected his holiness. So stop calling yourself holy when you rejected the one who is holy. And his word, come on and get it in your spirit. And his word, sw he swore, he said, I put my word even above my own name. Come on and get it in your spirit. So when you're rejecting the Lord by his word or by his spirit, you are rejecting his holiness. His holiness will demand an answer from you. So there's no neutral ground. There's no neutral ground. You can't sit there straddling the fence. You have to answer him. Because if you don't, he will all he simply has to do is remove his hand from your life and you'll receive the consequences of your rejection of his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why the wicked are being cleared out of here by the truckloads right now. And we're not to sympathize with it. We're to move in the holiness of the Lord. I, a bishop, are you saying not cry over my loved ones or not love them? I'm saying don't cry over them as the dead ones do. You got
got to wipe your tears. Ask the Lord to comfort you. He will comfort you. We will comfort you because he tells us to comfort you. Wherewith the comfort that we have received of him, we will cry with you. We will comfort you. But after a while, we got to wipe our tears and walk on and do what the Lord's called us to do. We cannot put our mother, father, sister, brother above the Lord Jesus Christ. We cannot do it. He says, if you do it, you're not worthy of me. I'm not going to pull I'm not going to pull punches here. I'm not going to cutesy foot around with us here because I'm not going to be guilty of your blood on my hands. Come on and get it in your spirit. That lo, the day shall come upon you. Listen to the scriptures forensically. The day shall come upon you that he will take you away with hooks and your posterity, which is your children, with fish hooks. That's happening right now. Saints, that's happening right now. Many of you are witnessing uh, people and their posterity being taken away by massive droves. There's a massive fire. One of my friends, uh, pastors in Pakistan, massive floods there. Many people have died. They don't even know what the number is. Come on, that's that, it's right here in the scriptures that he that low that comma low comma the day shall come upon you comma. They're here right now. Do you have wisdom to see it in the Holy Ghost? That he will take you away with hooks and your posterity with fish hooks. And ye shall go out at the breach, every cow and that which is before her. And ye shall cast them in to the palace, saith the Lord. Now verse 3 is a warning against rebellious women in leadership. Mm-hmm. I'm going to pause right there and let that sink deep down in your spirit. Verse 3 is a warning against all of you rebellious women in leadership, regardless if it's inside or outside the church. And if I read the New Living Translation of this to you, go ahead and read it, you will be absolutely offended because it refers to you in an offensive way. And the Lord's not pulling punches here. So get it in your spirit. Verse 4. Verse 3 is a warning against rebellious women and leadership. Verse 4. Come to Bethel and transgress at Gilgal. Multiply transgression and bring your sacrifices every morning and your tithes after three years. This is a satirical offering by the prophet. And offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving with leaven and proclaim and publish the free offerings for this liketh you, that's satirical, O ye children of Israel, saith the Lord God. This is a warning against the apostate church. And many of you in your posterity are being taken away right now into the corridors of hell. Now, verses 6 through verses 11 are the precarious ground that we are on as a country. And I want us to think of the precarious ground we're on as a country and as the international community versus the stable ground we could be on if we stop rejecting the Lord. Verse 6, and I also have given you cleanness of teeth in all your cities and want of bread in all your in all your places, whether it's government house, local house, state house, church house. I've been preaching it for three years. Your house, the outhouse, the dog house. The house does not matter. The Lord has given us cleanness. That means we are lacking in all these houses, spiritually and now naturally. Our supply lines are choked up. We are experiencing famine. We are experiencing so many things. But listen to what he says. And this is what the Lord is cautioning us to the body of Christ. Listen to what he says. I've done all these things. Yet have ye not returned unto me, saith the Lord. That's the first woe. Okay? And also, verse 7, I have withholden the grace. I withholding the rain from you when there were yet three months to the harvest, which then means your harvest was destroyed. And I caused it to rain upon one city and, and caused it not to rain upon another city. One piece was rained upon the piece whereupon it rained not withered. That's the destruction of crop saints. That's happening right now. So two or three cities wandered unto one city to drink water. That's happening right now. It's happening in New Mexico. Their water reservoir is bad. They don't know what they're going to do. It's happening right to, we're getting the glimpse of, this is happening to us right now. But they were not satisfied. Listen to what he says. A, a second woe. Yet have ye not returned unto me, saith the Lord. Here in Dallas, Texas, everybody was at the uh, baseball game yesterday. Tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people. Are that same amount of people in church this morning? No, because they have returned to the baseball stadiums after three plagues, but not unto the Lord. 
That's why there's seven more coming. Get it in your spirit. Verse 9, I've smitten you with blasting and mildew when your gardens and your vineyards and your fig trees and your olive trees increase. The palmer worm devoured them. This speaks of our economic system, i.e. the stock market, portfolios, investing, stocks, stock exchange, world stock exchange. It has been touched, but listen to what he says. Third woe, yet have ye not returned unto me, saith the Lord. Verse 10, I have sent among you the pestilence. That's a plague. That's COVID-19. That's monkeypox. After the matter of Egypt, how many plagues in Egypt? Ten. How many we prophesy in America? Ten. Get it in your spirit. Three have already come. We got seven more to go. The next one, I mind all of us, will be released January 1st to March 31st of 2023, and it will cling to us the remaining t of the ten years. Get it in your spirit. According to Deuteronomy the 12th chapter. Come on and let's get it in our spirit. Or I'm sorry, the 28th chapter. Come on and let's get it in our spirit. I have sent among you the pestilence after the manner of Egypt. Your young men have I slain with the sword. That's all of you killing each other in the street. It's already happening to us. And have taken away your horses. And I have made the stink of your camps to come up unto your nostrils. That's all the dead bodies that we keep losing is a stench in the spirit that keeps remaining in all of your nostrils. In your minds, in other words. Nostrils, breath, your mind. It's the very thing that comes out of your mouth every day. I lost my son. My son got shot. My son got murdered. It, the stench is in your nostrils, uh, 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 Americans. Come on, let's get it in our spirit. Look at what he says. Here is the fourth woe. Yet have ye not returned unto me, saith the Lord. Verse 11. I have overthrown some of you as some as God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah, and ye were as a firebrand plucked out of the burning, meaning you escaped. Your sister, your brother, your mother, your father, they died, but you escaped. Listen to what he says. Fifth woe. Yet, yet have ye not returned unto me, saith the Lord. And this is why the Lord is telling us not to pity these people, not to not to empathize with them, not to sympathize with them. Not those that are still left alive, but those that have gone. You know why? Because they would not return unto the Lord. Bishop, have you experienced this? Oh, yes. I remember inviting my nephew and my niece to church one time. And my niece said, you know, she said, uncle, I'll be there. My nephew said, no, I don't need that uncle. The next morning, this was sun, this was Saturday, I invited him. Two mornings later, on a Monday morning, we had church Sunday. My niece was there, my nephew wasn't. Monday morning, the police shot my nephew dead. Mm -hmm. I'm waiting for you to get it in your spirit. See, this said that the prophets are not, uh, it's not that we're so holy, we're not subject to these things. But let me tell you something. You know, listen, I didn't shed one tear. You know why? Because I love my nephew and I love him, but I understood you rejected the king I serve and I tried to give you an opportunity. And I love you, but I don't love you more than him. Endure hardness, saints, as good soldiers. You're quoting it, but are you doing it? Endure hardness. It requires hardness to go through here. Come on and get it in your spirit. I'm like your, I'm like your Holy Ghost filled drill instructor. Come on and get it in your spirit. And most of you say, I don't need a drill instructor. You're going to need one if you're going to make it through here. Because many of you are contemplating suicide right now, of which I bind that, and that demon, and I cast that demon out of your house right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. But you're not going to sit up here and lie and tell me you're not because the Holy Ghost told me you were before I got on the broadcast. Come on, we're trying to help you here. Take it in love. All of this is being preached in love. I know you say, you sound you sound mighty dangerous, Bishop. I am, I'm not to you, but I am the demons. And I'm driving those demons out of your spirit and out of your house right now. This word will deliver you. That's why Satan is fighting Coxsomey Church of Dallas, Texas so hard. And you must pray for us in every ministry like us. He's fighting us hard. Don't want to let us get on anything, go anywhere, do anything. He's shut, trying to shut the supply lines down, the financial supply. He's trying to do everything he can because this word will deliver you. No doubt in my mind. I hope it's not in yours. And if it is, just give me a call and let me bring it to you. And it'll deliver your whole household. And I tell you right now, households are being delivered because we're finding ways to get this word to you with the very little resources we have. We're still doing it because we are determined to do the will and the work of the Lord. Turn with me to Mark the 13th chapter. The Holy Ghost has given me rest. We're going to be done after we examine this chapter, all right? We'll pray our way out. Listen, Mark the 13th chapter right at the 23rd verse. But take... Ye, he, behold, I have foretold you all things. Now, whether you want to listen to it or not, body of Christ, is up to you. But as for me and my house, we're listening, we're going to serve the Lord. I heard the first lady say amen. 
We're going to serve the Lord. But take ye heed, behold, I have foretold you all things. But in those days, notice the language again. We had two Sodom and Gomorrah languages between the two passages of Scripture. Now we got, behold, two in those days. Between here and Amos 4, listen, the sun shall be dark and the moon shall not give her light and the stars of heaven shall fall and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken. That's happening right now. We're getting a glimpse of that right now. That's why Satan's fighting so furiously against the body of Christ. Then shall ye see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. He's getting ready to come in a great move, giant move of his spirit. We're getting a glimpse of this, saints, in our time. You ought to be shouting. It's a great privilege to see the days that we're in and the things that we're seeing. And then shall he send his angels and shall gather together his elect from the four winds. This speaks of the revival that we're praying for and talking about. From the uttermost part of the earth to the uttermost part of heaven. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. See, this is what reminds me in Jeremiah 8 and 7 when the Lord says, Listen, the stork knows her appointed times. The turtle, the turtle crane, and swallow uh, observe the times of their coming. But my people know not the judgment of the Lord. That is going to change if I have to preach until I blew in the face. That's going to change amongst the body of Christ. We are going to know the judgment of the Lord. We are going to know the times we're in. We're going to know where we're on the prophetic timeline. We here in Dallas, Fort Worth, at Cox Community Church, we're going to, we're watchmen. We have the word and the revelation of the Lord, and we're going to dispense it to the nation and the nation of the world because we're not going to live in ignorance any longer, body of Christ. I can't stress it enough. Come on and hear what the Holy Ghost is saying. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When our branch is yet tender and put it forth for leaves, verse 28 of Mark, the 13th chapter, when our branch is yet tender and put it forth the leaves, you know that summer is near. So ye in like matter, when ye shall see these things come to pass, know that the events I'm telling you of are nigh, even at the doors. That's why the Lord had me prophesy, we're no longer in the last days, we're in the last hours approaching the last minutes on the prophetic timeline. Come on and get it in your spirit. The things that I'm talking about, this glimpse of the book of Revelation, we're in it right now. We're already there. Verily I say unto you, verse 30, that this generation shall not pass till all these things be done. Our generation will not pass, body of Christ, to these things that I'm prophesying be accomplished. To the things the Holy Ghost is saying through this six foot two high yellow oracle from Detroit, uh, Michigan are accomplished. Our generation will not pass. The rapture's at hand, but it is not right now because these things have not come to pass in their fullness yet but when they do watch out there's nothing else on the, in the scriptures that are holding us from the rapture now what is holding us from the rapture immediately happening right now is because the lord has desired to give us a glimpse of the entire book of revelation it's not complete yet so we're still here and so shall we be but we are close come on and let's get it in our spirit Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. If your prophet's words are passing away, you got a false prophet. But this prophet right here, the words that I speak by the commandment of the Lord Jesus Christ, they have not passed away and they cannot pass away, and they shall not pass away. Get it in your spirit. But of that day and that hour, knoweth no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. Take ye heed and watch and pray. Did you hear what he said? Take ye heed that ye watch and pray. What are we supposed to be doing, body of Christ? Watching and praying. But this is not the kind of watching and praying of a religious spirit. This is watching and praying in the spirit realm as the Lord is showing us so we can make a connection in the natural realm so we can know where we are at any given time concerning the prophetic timeline and the mind and the heart of the Lord. We have to pray and commune in the spirit with the Lord to give us to the ability to see, watch, watch, to see in heaven the things that are coming to pass on the earth so we know where we are and we know how to direct ourselves and we know how to help others correctly. Not just praying amiss, shooting blanks in the dark. Come on and let's get in our spirit. For the Son of Man is as a man taking a far journey who left his house and gave authority to his servants. He's talking about us, body of Christ. And to every man his work. 
My work is not your work. Your work is not my work. My work is not our brothers and sisters' work. Their work is not me and your work. And your work is not your brothers and sisters' work. He is given one spirit, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father who is uh, who is above all, uh, through all, and in you all. We're all of one substance, but we have different work to do. So let's stop fighting and talking about each other and get to work. The Lord's not asking us. He commanded us to work while it is day because the night is coming when none of us are going to be able to work. Get it in your spirit. He gave authority to his servants and to every man his work. So all of you that keep saying, no, I don't know if the Lord called me. I don't know what he called me to do. I don't know what he called me to do. We can help you. But the fact that you don't know that you're called, you're called right here in this very verse. You have been given, a given authority. When you are blood washed and you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you have received authority. Now you have to learn how to walk in that authority. That's where you need your seasoned brothers and sisters to help you and to teach you. That's how this goes. Somebody had to help me. The authority was given to me in heaven. The revelation was given me by the Lord Jesus Christ. The ministry, the anointing, the, uh, the apostolic armor, everything that the Lord gave me. He gave me in heavenly places, but it had to be worked out in the earth realm. Through prayer, through studying to show myself approved, through working with seasoned veterans to help me understand some things until I can hear the Holy Ghost for myself. Once I can hear the Holy Ghost, now the past 25 plus years, the Holy Ghost has been given it to me directly. Directly, so that I don't have need that any man teach me. And he wants the same thing for every member of the body of Christ. Please be aware of that. Now listen forensically here. Verse 34. And to every man his work, and commanded the porter to watch. Oh, let me get a sip here, because I'm about to break a revelation open that's going to stun some people. I used to work for my mother years ago as a porter. My mother was a, a resident nurse in a, in a nursing home, and I took a job with her just before I went to the military. This was uh, pre-Desert Storm, and then Desert Storm broke out, and I remember her, me and her sitting in the chair, and I'm going to the military. She's crying because this war just broke out, and, and, and I'm going, and, and, and of course, you know, she's nervous. I may not return, but I was a porter at that time there. You know what the job of a porter is? Oh, please fasten your seatbelts. Click two of them on you, because some of you are going to get thrown for a wide loop on this one. The, my job as a porter in this nursing home was to make sure that those that were serving the meals didn't put anything in it that was against the dietary restrictions of the doctor that would kill the patient. My job was to watch their meals to make sure that their medication was right and their meals were right. Nothing that would cause an allergic reaction or anaphylactic shock that would send them to death. Nothing that would cause the blood to malfunction, the nervous system, the organs. The porter's job was to watch that there be not death in the pot, so sort of to speak. So the Lord is saying, and commanded the porter to watch. I am such porter, one such porter. Porters in the spirit are commanded to watch what's being fed to the body of Christ. Why do you think I've been preaching about apostate preachers in the apostate church and what you're watching and seeing and ingesting in your spirit? My job is to preach the word in a way that you understand that you're receiving a word that's not where death is not in the midst of the message. We are porters. We are watchmen. We are watching that your spirit and your soul not receive messages that will cause death in you and bring the Antichrist forces in your home and in your spirit and in your mind and in your soul and in your life and in your children's life that you and your children be taken away with fish hooks and your, with hooks and your posterity with fish hooks. Are we putting the word of the Lord together on this morning and hearing what the Holy Ghost is saying? The porter has been sin commanded. Notice what he said. He didn't ask us. He commanded at the porter to watch. I'm watching for your souls. If you have a shepherd that doesn't watch for your souls, you need to get a new shepherd because you got a hireling and not a shepherd. I said it. Your pastor is a hireling according to the word of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is not a true shepherd. True shepherds act as porters. We watch that there's no depth that you're ingesting when you hear the word of the Lord. That you're not ingesting apostasy and lethargy and apathy. Come on and get it in your spirit. Watch ye therefore. 
For ye know not when the master of the house cometh at even, or at midnight, or at the cock crowing, or in the morning. Lest, come, lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping. That spiritual lethargy and apathy which many of you are in because of the messages you're ingesting by your hireling pastors who are not real shepherds of the Lord. And what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch! Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your presence and your power in this war room on this morning and your presence amongst the saints. You said where two or three are gathered together in your name. There you are in the midst of us. You are certainly here. And uh, uh, Lord Jesus, our King of Kings and Lord of Lords, you have certainly showed up and showed out on today. You have given a demonstration of your presence and your power in and by your word through your oracle that you have invested 30 years in, that you have anointed, and that you have sent as a porter and commanded me to watch that there be no death in the pot. Father, I've done your will today. There, I, I, I know according to your heart and your word that my hands are clear of all men's blood. I proclaim, I've ceased not to warn them for the space of almost three years now in this Dallas-Fort Worth area. Father, go forth and touch by your spirit and by your power. Lord, you said if you be lifted up, you draw all men unto you. Go by your spirit and your power. Begin to touch lives. Lord, begin to heal, to deliver, set free. Send your servants forth. Send me forth. Send your laborers into the harvest. We are going forth. Lord, grant unto your servants all boldness that we may preach the word. Lord, give us hardness of face against those that have faces like flint. Lord, let us break into pieces these hard and stony hearts, these hearts that are rejecting, these hearts that are resisting. Lord, you told us you have made us brazen walls and pillars of iron. And we have gone forth to break all of this foolishness that these families might not be taken away and their posterity might not be taken away by the forces of the evil one. You are in the business of saving souls and you have commanded your servants to be in this business and we are going forth. Lord, grant unto your servants great signs and wonders and powers that your people may be delivered. Cut off the forces of the enemy that are trying to keep us from the masses and that are trying to keep us quelled in a corner. Lord, break us out right now in the name of Jesus. Send us forth that your power might go to your people who are suffering. They sat in Nephtali and Zebulon in great darkness but Lord your word says you'd send a light. Lord Jesus send us as your 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 agents and your hands and your and your feet and your mouths and your heart and your mind. Send us forth to break in pieces the, uh, the altars that Satan has set up in all your people's lives. We've come to break down altars. We've come to shake powers. We've come to shake cities. We've come to shake nations. We have come in the power of the Holy Ghost. Help us turn this world upside down and shake it for your glory. Lord, let your voice rattle amongst the heavens and amongst the powers of the evil one. Shake now in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, have your way, and we'll be careful to give you the glory. None like you in all the heaven and the earth, Lord. And we praise you. Lord, break these altars. Lord, break these powers. Let us go forward that your people might be healed and delivered and great signs and miracles and wonders might be granted to them. Have your way on the remainder of this day, Lord. We stand in your presence and in the firepower of your Holy Ghost. If there's anybody that needs you, Lord, put us in their path or us in their path and we'll be careful to, to, to faithfully discharge your commandments and your glory to them. Father, we love you and we praise you. In King Jesus' name, we give you the glory, Lord. Amen. All right, saints. Listen, had a great time in the Lord again. We worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. Let him give you beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that you might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. I bid you all a good day, and I love you all in the Lord Jesus Christ for now.